everybody, what's up? I'm here to review Imperium. It stars Daniel Radcliffe, who plays a young idealistic FBI agent, very good at his job, who has to go undercover in order to infiltrate a radical right-wing terrorist group, basically a bunch of neo-Nazis. Now I might cause some controversy by saying this, but I think that Imperium is the sort of film Snowden should have been, and judging by both of their Rotten Tomatoes scores, I might be onto something there. Uh, that's another film I also reviewed, and I wasn't particularly fond of it, and the reason I'm saying this is that both films basically tackle stories that that deal with uh, basically infiltrating the underbelly of certain malicious activities. Both films try to be these really low-key and restrained thrillers in which an otherwise quick-witted protagonist has to outsmart his superiors in order to extract as much information as he can and without being detected in the process. But while Snowden, as I said in my review, makes the mistake of opting to be more of this kind of biographical film, Imperium leaves pretty much all traces of dramatic elements completely out of the picture. The only thing we know about Daniel Radcliffe's character is that he is an eager FBI agent who just wants to prove himself, who just wants to do the best job he can possibly can. There is no girlfriend or wife or children waiting for him at home, worrying sick about him. There is no best friend uh, that he can call to help him out when he is in trouble. He is a lone wolf who is completely aware of what he's getting himself into, and I think that's pretty much all the tension we need. I mean, this just proves that you can have a protagonist that doesn't necessarily have to have any ties to any other characters. You, you can put him in danger and to still make us like worry about his safety, still make us care about him if you just make him an interesting enough character or if you get a, a talented enough actor to portray him. And that aspect of the film pretty much works. Another thing that works about this film I think is the tone. Now I think this is the sort of film that actually benefits from its simplicity. It actually works in its advantage because like I said this film is very restrained. There are no like gigantic action set pieces, there are no huge explosions, there are no like huge shootouts and gunfights, anything like that. Even though we are constantly expecting those to sort of moments, but I think it's precisely because it never really happens, even though many times we do get pretty close to, to actually seeing something like that happen in the film. But the events in the film slowly escalate. At first he only has to deal with a group of thuggish skinheads, not really big game so to speak, but as time goes on he manages to dig himself deeper into this underworld of white supremacy and comes across more organized and more dangerous inner circles who really don't shy away from wanting to commit actual terrorist acts. The film really never promises to be anything much more than the sum of its parts. This is really evidenced even by the very first scene when we see a van just going through the streets of Washington DC. There's a guy in it who activates some sort of bomb, he is given a gun and we're made to think that he is preparing to commit some sort of attack and we see the FBI team just uh, moving in and preparing to just take him down. And you know, you're, you're thinking like, okay, this is probably going to be a pretty tense scene, the guy is probably going to pose some sort of resistance, and it's going to be, there's going to be a fight, possibly even a bloodbath, but it never really, it actually never happens, they, they just arrest him, they just plain and simple, they arrest him, and that's the scene. <laughs> but the fact that they keep things so simple, I think, also works as a disadvantage. Now, I'm not an expert, I don't know anything about the FBI, I don't know how they operate, but there was something here that just made absolutely no sense to me. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe's character, okay, he goes undercover, but he, he uses his real name, he doesn't change his name, all he does is just come up with this, this fake bullshit backstory about him having served in the war in Iraq. I mean, come on, I mean, isn't, doesn't that make it easier for anyone he comes in contact with to just basically find out anything there is to find out about him? I mean, on the very first day he meets with the neo-Nazis, they find out where he lives, they come pay him a visit, unexpectedly. So, I don't know, it was, it seemed like very strange, I mean, the operation seems risky enough, but why do you have to make it this risky? There is a scene in the film when the neo-Nazis organize this rally. Obviously, they're giving the Nazis salute and saying hateful things. And there is another person on the other side of the barricade, an African-American man, who sees Daniel Radcliffe, recognizes him, it's obviously someone who knows him, and yells out to him, like, hey, what are you doing? Obviously, Daniel Radcliffe, in order to not blow his cover, yells back something like, I don't know, I think he tells him to go fuck himself. He calls him the N-word. This was a scene that really got me thinking 
thinking about something I wish was in the movie that isn't, I would have wanted to see how it is like for a person who has to go undercover and pretend for a long time that they are this horrible person, how is it like for them to uh, eventually get back to their real life, to, to get to talk to the people that know him and explain to them this whole operation that they had to keep secret up until that point. This is not something we actually get in the film, like in the end we see Daniel Radcliffe getting back to his, his regular life as being something that's easy as pie basically, so... Yeah. The movie in the nutshell, I mean, it has good performances, they're serviceable, it has some tense and suspenseful scenes which most of them do work for what it's worth, some of them don't, they prove to be a little bit too many false leads and dead end scenes that don't really go anywhere. Uh, the, the film is incredibly standard, there doesn't seem to be any message to it, I mean, if there is any message, it's that neo-nazis are people too incredibly misguided and stupid 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 people uh, i don't know if you want to watch a film about a similar subject not a similar film uh, necessarily but something that's very good i suggest you watch the believer starring ryan gosling that's a very good film i just watched it today recommend that shit so this movie is okay it's fine i'm glad i saw it it's watchable it's not anything i would throw my panties in the air for <laughs> so yeah i guess that's it folks thank Thanks for watching my review, as always I will see you later with other reviews, until then stay cool, take care and goodbye.